Hello, welcome to Evening Prayer. I am again using Timothy Keller's book, My Rock, My Refuge, for our psalm. And if you're wanting to mark it, our psalm this evening is Psalm 52, verses 5 to 9. We'll be using the prayer book, but you don't need to because the text is already in. But if you'd like to use the prayer book, we begin on page 410. Evening Prayer. Let us begin. The Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give God the glory. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. We say our canticle together. Be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. For we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The day is now past and the night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Father of lights, receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light for all the world, delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our psalm this evening, Psalm 52, verses 5 to 9, which we'll say by alternate half verses. Surely God will bring you down to everlasting ruin. He will snatch you up and pluck you from your tent. He will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear. They will laugh at you saying, Here now is the man who did not make God his stronghold, but trusted in his great wealth and grew strong by destroying others. But I am like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. For what you have done, I will always praise you in the presence of your faithful people. And I will hope in your name, for your name is good. I'm again reading from Timothy Keller's book, My Rock, My Refuge. It is a small reflection on the psalm that we've just read. It's called How to Last. The sure downfall of those who trust in great wealth and who grow strong by destroying others is not a plot invented by Hollywood, nor is it wishful thinking. We know deep down that judgment will eventually come to those who ruin others for their own gain. Why else do those books and movies that depict the victory of the underdog over the oppressor ring so true? Success due to pride and ruthlessness never lasts. But to trust in God's steadfast, gracious love and know him in prayer and be rooted in the community of believers is to be like an olive tree, one of the longest living trees that there is. This is how to last. These are very poignant words to reflect on in this time of isolation and staying at home. God our Saviour, you sent Jesus into the world of sin and delivered him up to death for us. Kindle in our hearts the same love with which he loved his own to the end, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus 16, 22 to 17, 7. On the sixth day they gathered twice as much food, two omars apiece. When all the leaders of the congregations came and told Moses, he said to them, This is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil, and all that is left over put aside to be kept until morning. So they put it aside until morning, as Moses commanded them, and it did not become foul, and there were no worms in it. Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. For six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is a Sabbath, there will be none. On the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather, and they found none. 
The Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and instructions? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, he gives you food for two days. Each of you stay where you are. Do not leave your place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The house of Israel called it manna. It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded. Let an omer of it be kept throughout your generations, in order that they may see the food with which I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar and put an omer of manna in it and place it before the Lord to be kept throughout your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron placed it before the covenant for safekeeping. The Israelites ate manna for forty years until they came to a habitable land. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. An omer is a tenth of an ephah. From the wilderness of Sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarrelled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it, so that people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah and Meribah, because the Israelites quarrelled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The second reading is from 1 Peter 4, 3 to 11. 1 Peter 4, 3 to 11. You have already spent enough time in doing what the Gentiles like to do, living in licentiousness, passions, drunkenness, revels, carousing and lawless idolatry. They are surprised that you no longer join them in the same excesses of dissipation, and so they blaspheme. But they will have none to give account to him who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was proclaimed even to the dead, so that... Though they had been judged in the flesh as everyone is judged, they might live in the spirit as God does. The end of all things is near. Therefore be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like a good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power for ever and ever. Amen. Strong words, powerful words. Lord, may your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. We call the song of Christ's glory. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in our human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. We say together the Lord's Prayer. 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life of all, who put their trust in him, raise us, we pray, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may ever seek the things which are above, where he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray for the world, the church and each other. We do pray for peace of the world. We pray for the leaders of the nations, for those in authority, for governments and church leaders. We pray for the welfare of the Holy Church. We pray for all clergy and those ministering in these difficult times. And indeed, we pray for all who proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray for ourselves, for this place where we live, for our space in the world. We offer them to God. We pray for our friends and our family, for those close and those far. We pray for rest, for good, true rest in you, Lord. We pray for the sick and we hold them before you so that your healing touch may always be upon them. Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for all we have experienced, for the conversations we may have had, for the encounters we may have had, for those around us, near and far. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest on your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us for evening prayer this evening, this April 23rd. It's lovely that you could join us for evening prayer. Have a really lovely evening. Have a blessed night and a beautiful sleep. And I'll see you tomorrow. God bless.